In this, this, this sermon series that we have started, God's Not Dead, three weeks ago we started this on Easter Sunday, and it was to really just to understand and ask you the question, what do you believe? Are you riding on a relationship with God because of a religion, because somebody else had it, like your grandma or your mom or your dad, and you say, I'm a Baptist because my mom's a Baptist, or I'm a Catholic because that's where we were raised, and that's what it is. It's all a religious, and you have no relationship with God. And then that if you were ever confronted by somebody, maybe your friends or something on what do you believe, then you were really standing at the point, well, I believe uh, because I'm a Baptist. I believe that Jesus is Jesus. And, but that's all the farther it goes. So in that, I've challenged you in thinking about what do you believe? And if you were really confronted on it, that could you really explain why do you believe in God, Jehovah, or Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit? Like, for the first series, it was asked as, like, where is God when life falls apart? How can you say you believe in God when your grandma is dying of cancer? We kind of saw where that first guy, he was in the, in the video, he's, he's confronting his mom, who was a follower of Jesus Christ, but she has Alzheimer's, and she don't even remember who he is. And he's angry at God and angry at her to following at a God who would let her have this. See, it's the understanding that in that series, we live in a fallen world that's cursed. That no one is, is really going to get away from this earth unscarred. Even though we say we live in this God and He's mighty and He is holy and He is. But He is. I mean, it, I, I use the example of there were three guys that followed. And his, their name was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, Abednego. And they broke the rules of the king of the land. And their sentence was death. And they went to that king and they looked at the king and they said, Listen, you're going to put us in that fire. And whether we live or whether we die, our God is still our God. And they went into the fire and God showed up. And he even sent Jesus to walk around in the fire with them. That they survived that. But it's still they had to go through the fire. So it's the question of, you may be going through something. And you may be questioning God. So on this prayer request, we have, we have mentioned a lot of names that are people were going through things in life. And they're asking, God, where are you? I mean, I, I, I've walked with, with my wife and several things of cancer in her life. And, and it would, the question would come up, you know, of thinking this in my mind. God... Where are you? Why are you allowing her to go through? We do so much for you, God. But it's the idea of it. My God is still my God. Whether He takes it away or whether He allows it to stay. And I'm asking you, do you believe that? Then there was the, 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 the question of, is our faith blind? Do we really believe? It, it, again, the faith is believing in something you can't see. But is there some things in your life that you're allowing to come into your life and you're just taking it for granted? God is wanting us to step up our relationship with Him because there is a time coming. I read this book over and over and over again. There is a time coming. And the Christians, the followers of Jesus Christ, need to get ready. Because there's going to be a lot of lost people that are going to be beside Him. I mean, imagine, go back to the day of 9-11. When that tragic moment hit, everybody was in frantic. And there were, the churches were full because the lost people and even the people that were say they were Christians and haven't been to church for many, 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 many years were coming to God and seeking the preacher to see what God has to say, to say what's going on. Is America going to die? Is it going to blow up? Is there going to be a ha have? Are we all going to die and go to hell because we don't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? There's all this stuff going on. What do you believe? Do you have blind faith? Faith? Or do you have faith and you know the substance of your faith? Because substance is like this. I look at that chair, but I don't really know that it works yet because I haven't seen no one sit in it yet. So the point of what I'm saying is that it doesn't work for me yet until I see somebody sit in it. So does God work for you because you've sat in it? And that's why you believe you don't have blind faith, you have faith. 
You believe because you have sat in the miseries of life and the curses of life and God has been faithful through the valleys of the shadow of death and He's brought you back out the other side. <clears throat> then we're bringing in today. Today is, is the idea of saying skepticism. A lot of followers of Jesus Christ have a problem with people being skeptics of God. Their God. It's my God. Don't you say nothing bad about you. You're an atheist. How, how dare you not believe in a God? It's true. We, we, we like to do that. We like to jump on the bandwagon of, of, of putting people down and saying, how could you not believe a God? Well, how about the people that are going through the tragedies of life that they're going through and they're wondering, where is God? I mean, we kind of saw on that video where that, that lady was going through that little scanner thing, you know, and, and the idea of she was going through something terrible. It was cancer. And the idea of saying, how do you believe in a God who lets this bad stuff happen and kill people? But we forget God is holy. He is not the one who did it. It's the evil of the curse of the world. That the, even, the, the, even de the devil doesn't even have such great powers. He can bring a lot of misery on our lives. But we put the understanding that there is evil. There is a saint. And there are bad people. It's there. So why not embrace the understanding of being skeptic? Law, the Bible even, it refers to it. There was this guy, his name was, uh, his name was Thomas. See, I wanted to kind of look at Jesus. He welcomes skepticism. What? Yeah, he welcomes skepticism. And Thomas is my guy for an example. He walked with Jesus for three years. He was like with the best of best friends with Jesus. He can always say, you know, you know so-and-so? Yeah, we're good friends. You know, uh, you, you just met him on Facebook. You never met with him face-to-face, hey, -face, you know? Hello. But Thomas could say, I walked with him. I slept with him. I ate with him. And, you know, and that day that Jesus died on the cross, all the doubts, because I remember the story about Thomas one time. He was, they were sitting around the camp, and somebody said, well, we, Jesus said something about going to Jerusalem. And, and he's like, you know, the one guy, was, another guy was saying, well, we don't want to go down there. We'll all die. And Thomas says, listen, if Jesus wants to go down there, then we go with Jesus and we all die with Jesus. It, let's go. He had bold. He was bold with that. But now he comes. Sometimes we read. I, I, I've read in the Bible over and over time. And sometimes I have to refer back to that. Is that God. I'm praying this prayer. And nothing's done. Nothing's being happened. And God says in, in his word. It says. Well sometimes you might just be asking the wrong thing. Maybe we need to just back. And punt. And re ask a different prayer. Maybe we need to involve the Holy Ghost. Hey yo Holy Ghost. Come, come. Oh, you're inside me. I think I might be praying the wrong thing because I'm seeing nothing happen. How do I pray? And will you pray with me? So then I'll be standing on God's word. So where it says we're to agree upon anything and asking in Jesus' name. Now you got me and I got the Holy Ghost. That's two of us. We got it. Say what? <laughs> it's His word. And your person, the person you know that you're talking about or you're worried about is going to go to hell. So why not use the word to find the way to bring salvation, which is a miracle. Because without a miracle, we're all doomed, are hopeless. And that's what we need. We need God to move in a, in, a, in a mighty way. See, the thing about it is, is that a lot of times I've looked back in the past and there's usually three things that people refuse in, in back like my, my grandpa's age and you know and even maybe in my mom and dad's age uh, of that there's three things that you really do not talk about politics sex and religion and when i look at america that is why we are falling away from God and our, and our country is a slap mess because we're not talking about it. This book right here talks all about it. 
Talks about everything in there. The politics, about the politics. Talks about sex. That's why we're having problems in our marriages and problems in before marriages because we're doing the sex thing wrong. We're having sex before marriage and God says that's against Him. And we're, having, we're having little kids and we're having issues with that because we're doing it wrong. We're out of God's way. And in the religion, we're having this thing that we got a ritual of doing things and that's not what it's about. It's about a relationship. It's about knowing somebody that cares for you. And when he cares for you, he's going to show you the right direction. So why not have the right attitude and in that looking in the book and loving the people around us because you were in that spot once before and God met you and he saved you. So why not care about them? Well, gosh, John, you really don't know how bad of a person. You should hear their mouth. Well, I understand it. I had a foul mouth too. I love the F word. Every other word was the F word. Was the, you know, but when I met Jesus and He changed my heart and He changed and He just poured His love on me, that was the first thing to go. He took it from me. Now, some followers of Jesus Christ, it, He's a little bit slow on His grace and changing there. <laughs> As a southern, as a southern people go, bless their heart. It's it's like our it's our way out of talking bad about the person for a minute. When we start talking bad about the person, we go, bless their heart. You know, and that gives us the okay to talk bad. But it's the idea that still we're a work in progress. The majority of us, the ninety nine point five percent of us, we are a work in progress. I am a work in progress. Some people who got the little blinders on and think I'm somebody. I'm telling you, take me off that stinking pedestal right now. I don't belong there. Jesus does. He's the one that shows me the way. And he's the one that's going to show you. And if you're looking at me, I'm going to show you him. So the attitude, the way we're supposed to treat people and talk about people and talk about things is, is love. We need to show love towards them. In, um, in Luke 15, 20, it says, that it talks about... The father's love. His, his, his son comes to him and says, You know what, Dad? I've had it from here. Give me what, uh, my inheritance. I'm out of here. And he goes off and does some horrible things and he loses his whole inheritance. And his dad is worried that enough that he sits up and watches for his son every night. How that God sits on his throne and he waits for the lost to come back. And that day, that lost son came back. And he left the porch and ran to his son that how much that the people that you know that are lost when they start to come and they start realizing they're changing their mind I'm going in the wrong direction I need to go back to I need to go to this God or I need to go back to God and that God starts running to them because he loves them and as he doesn't come up there he doesn't smack them in the face and yo boy where you been I've told you you know he doesn't do that the first thing it does in the Bible it describes him that he put his arms around his son and he loved his son and even though his son was trying to choke out the words of saying dad I, I sinned against you and I sinned against God and he's like hold up son hold up hold up and he looks to his servant and he says get my best robe get my ring get some slippers and my, my best shoes and put it on my boy this is my son I love him he didn't kick him while he's down and us as followers of Jesus Christ, we should even look at the Christians that are all of a sudden there, something came into their life and they're making some bad choices. We shouldn't be kicking the other Christians while, we were down, while they're down. We should be praying for them. We should be saying, God, I don't know what's going on in their life, but I'm seeing they're making some bad choices. So I'm asking you to love them and whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, get them back. And that plea should come out of our mouth all day long, all day long, all day long. Because it's important. Because if they get back to God, how many people are they involved with that will get saved and see Jesus Christ? It's about a revolution of understanding that God sees a lost people and He wants to save them. But we, as the followers of Jesus Christ, we, we are snubbing our nose to these people because of the way they look, because of what comes out of their mouth, because of what they're shooting up or because of what they're, what's going on in their lives and we're calling them bad people. Well, if these bad people, if they die right now where they're at, they're going to hell and separated from a holy God who loves them so much, who paid the greatest, greatest, greatest price ever. He gave His Son up 
for them to have a chance to be reunited with Him. Our attitude needs to change. The goal is love. Yet with a gentleness and reverence. Their skepticisms should be okay. They doubt God. It's okay to doubt God. Let's go on a journey and search Him. Let's seek Him out together. How about truth? To share the truth and not be, how about not to share, how about to be clever and argumentative? <clears throat> Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek. We're considered the Greek. If, you're, if your heritage is not Jewish heritage, then you're considered the Greek. And in that understanding, that, that this is really cool how God works. This was already in the works, and as this person comes into my life, and they're having issues about talking about this other person, they're discussing God, and they're an atheist, and they feel that this atheist is trying to persuade them away from God that God doesn't exist. So I mean, that's where the, this is like, it fit like this uh, prepare, preparation for this message was like perfect fit for this person that I'm discussing it with. But I'm getting the attitude with this person is that, <clears throat> excuse me, they want to shove God down their throat so that they'll get saved. And I'm just like, hold on, hold on. If you're going to go into this conversation right off the bat with this bad attitude, and that you're going to try to be clever, because I could teach you to be clever. Here's my way of being clever to especially those that don't believe God, okay? Here's my, here's my clever way, you know, just to be a, a smart aleck, you know? I would be insulting your intelligence if I did this to you, okay? Six billion years ago, there was this big bang. Boom! Okay? All that big boom, this, that boom and there was a big bunch of smoke, and all of a sudden this liquid stuff started forming a rock, and all of a sudden the rock became formed, and then out of the middle of the rock, this bubbling ooze started coming up out of that. And out of that bubbling ooze, it started to take the shape of this bottle. All of a sudden, you know, you can see the lid on and everything and all of a sudden and that, that took a billion years just for that to happen. Really? I'm serious. Okay? And then all of a sudden, you know, about, about a half a billion years, all of a sudden this writing appeared on there and it said members mark on it. So it's a, million, a billion and a half years to create this bottle out of an explosion. I would be insulting your intelligence. Because here's how I see it. You see that little that, that, uh, picture on the wall? I mean, actually, like that little piece of wood there and that writing on that? All right, when I look at that, even though I don't see somebody's hands on that, somebody created that. Somebody had a piece of wood and had an idea, and they may, may have even drew it out. And they took this, this saw and they cut it square. And they took this router and put the grooves in it. And then they painted it. And then somebody with some really neat handwriting wrote on that. Knowing the Bible is one thing. Knowing the author is another. And they painted that on there. So as I look at that, I, it just like, did it really go poof and it was there? No. Somebody created it. Then when I look at this house, I look at how the walls and everything like that, and I think about it, there's no way they go, boom, and all of a sudden this house would be here. Somebody had an idea, they drew it on a piece of paper, then these guys came in, or even though we don't see them hammering and nailing and putting the stuff up there and putting the paint, painting everything like that, there, there was a creator, somebody created this house. Then now I would look at the outside and look at the trees and the beauty of the flowers and I would look at uh, the grass and, and, and all of that and I would see that beauty and say no way an explosion could have done that but a creator with an artistic eye and mind made that. Just something to think about. Just something to think about. Because here's the idea. We need to know God's word. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is, is living and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the di division of soul and spirit of both joint and marrow, and of able to judge the thoughts 
intentions of the heart. The power of this Bible is so amazing that if we know the words and get to know our God in His words, that when we speak these words, it goes into the person's life and it's like taking a sword and going straight for the heart and salvation will come. No mites, no maybes, will. Because it's like this. A farmer was throwing some seeds out, and he was throwing them out to plant them, but the idea is that sometimes the seed goes in the wrong place. It goes by a rock, you know, in a rocky area. It starts to grow up, but there's no, the, the rocks are so binding that the roots can't go out anywhere. So it dies. Another seed lands in an area where there's a bunch of weeds and stuff like that. And it starts to reach up above the weeds, you know, to see some sunlight. But the weeds are so strong in the ground that it chokes out and draws all the nourishment out. And it dies. But there's one spot that the, 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 the seed lands in a perfect spot. That it grows up and it flourishes and it produces fruit. The idea is to be wise followers of Jesus Christ and know where to plant the seed and how to plant it. And sometimes it takes us to be humble and sometimes and, and, and that and saying this this talk about God is starting to get out of control and uh, it's starting to affect our friendship. So let's just back it down, okay? Your friendship means more to me than for me to bash you in your beliefs about not believing in God and my belief in God. Your friendship is more important to me. That is being humble and that is being your first at, uh, step of saying you care about them and then caring about them. That's going to open up a door somewhere down the line that the seed is now planted. You have just now stuck the, th the, the threshold of the God's word into their heart and they will be back. They will be back. 1 Peter 5.5 5 says, A young man a younger men, likewise, be subject to the elder, and, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, for God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Do you know what grace means? Grace means favor. Unmerited favor. And how much we need favor for our friends that are lost. We need favor. So why not be humble and say, you know what, this, this talk, uh, you're, getting way, you're getting mad. And this is nothing for us to get mad about. It's okay for you to be doubting God. There's proof of a man, another man that walked with Jesus all his life and he doubted it. So it's okay for you to doubt it. So we're just going to back away and all of a sudden this word will be like a sword. It will come in. And it will anchor itself in that person's mind and in their heart. And will take root. That's how you do it. You follow his words, his instructions. See, in, uh, in the Corinthians, Paul reminds us in the Corinthians, it says, um, knowledge puffs up while li love builds up. See, you know the thing about puffing up is... <gasps> All it takes is a poke, <laughs> and I'm, it's, all, it's all gone, you know? But if you do love, it builds up, and it's like the adding to strength. It cannot be let loose. It's there. It's built. It's strong. Love builds up, and that's the avenue that we need. We need to go that direction. But it's the thought we need to be Winsome. Winsome means to win. That means not to give up. Not to give up on your friend. It may be a long haul for you. There's some people that have been praying for their lost loved ones for 20, 30 years. It may be a long haul. But it's the idea of saying, I'm not going to give up. 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 I'm not going to say that. Say that with me. No, I'm not going to give up. That's what I'm talking about. Say it again. Are you going to give up? No. All right. 
Matthew, Matthew 9.37 Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. In Revelation 14.15 it says, And another angel came out of the temple, crying out with a loud voice to him who sat on the, on the cloud, Put in your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, because the harvest of the earth is ripe. This is the verse that tells me that people, it's, t it's time to get ready. It is time to get ready because there's something fixing to come down the pipeline that, that people are going to start seeking God and we need to know in our hearts and know what we believe to share what we believe in a loving and kind way and even with hugs and touches and, 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 and maybe even our finances and maybe with just food, cooking for somebody or giving the shirt off of your back. It's the idea that that is the day it's salvation is going to come greatly to a lot of people. And right now, my sense that I see the Spirit, and I feel the Spirit, and it is here. There are people that we know, and it is time for their salvation. It is time for their salvation. We need to get on board with what God's plan is, so that it comes to pass. So we need to think of, of what is God's plan, how is He going to do it, and I'm on board with it, that I'm not bucking against it, and my mouth doesn't stop it and prolong it any longer. Because if I go out here to the garden, Jaden's fixing the plant, and put some plants in the ground, I put some seeds in the ground, and uh, next week I come out there and I like this and walk on them, do you think that's going to help them grow? No. We need to be on board with the reaper when he comes to bring the harvest because the angel said it's coming. It's coming. And so those that are in doubt, those that are being skeptic about it, we need to love them, care about them, and seek God with them and just kind of let God do his thing and most of all, pray, 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 pray. 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 Say that, pray. 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 That's a communication with God. Matthew 13, 18 through, 18 through 23, it says, that was, the, that was the, the parable of the sower. Then we should go into the, the idea of, of, of seeing 1 Timothy 2, 4. Desire all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. That should be our desire. You were lost once. God hunted you down and introduced you to Jesus, the Savior, and you got saved. It's fitting to do our part in introducing the lost. How, how much of a word would be as, as the found, found the lost? Or what was, how, how would it, it's got to be worded something different. It's kind of, there's something sticking right there. It's like really catchy. The lost the found find the lost. There it is. The found, where the found, find the lost. They need Jesus. And this is only possible, this is only possible with God's involvement in our relationships with others. Because if we go do this on our own, we're going to take, uh, take our foot and insert mouth and we're going to screw it up. And they're going to be mad, or they're going to do something wrong. Uh, uh, they're going to just go. It's going to go away from God, even further than what they already are. We need to be like farmers. We need to start getting the ground ready to go. We start, and for when the reaper comes for the bring the salvation, it's it's locked, it's done. We're going to, and all of a sudden you're going to. Just, I, I'm going to see you the next Sunday, and this is going to be coming through the door. It's going, woo -hoo -hoo, woo -hoo -hoo. man! It was everything you said happened. It wasn't what I said. It's what, what God said. I'm just repeating what He said. And those people that we pray for, they're all going to get saved. It's a gimme. Because I have in Hebrews 11, it says that faith, faith is for hope for the things unseen. 
Hope is like taking a check. If I wrote a check and if I had a million dollars and I said, I, and you believe me that I had a million dollars and I would write you a check for a million dollars and you go to the bank and say, I hope this check cashes. I hope this check cashes. And you go in there and you sign the back of it and they said, well, you're in luck. He's got the money in there today. You know, it, it's the understanding that you could take the check to the bank with God. Salvation is coming. It's here. He's going to save them. Because His Word tells me so. Let's bow our heads. As we close, maybe today, maybe today you've been, you've been skeptic with God for a lot of things that are going on in your life. It's okay. But I'm challenging you, don't stop going to Him. Because this journey that you're going through, that it's, it's for a purpose. God is going to use this for a purpose. He's going to turn it to good, just like He did His, his other followers. And for those that are lost, I challenge you, pray for them daily like you've never prayed for them before. Speak the words, thank you my God for saving them. That's faith with substance. Make the challenge. I dare you to, I dare you to do those things. I dare you to put God at His word. And then your skepticism will go away. And then you'll be able to use those words. Well, I'm sorry, my friend, that you don't believe in God. But let me tell you about what God did when I didn't believe in Him. I had skepticism with Him. And tell them your testimony. And watch God use that to love on them and reveal true love and salvation come. So as we pray, search your heart. Search your mind. Today is the day of salvation. If you think you're saved because of something happened in the past, but you're not in the right, you're not where you're supposed to be in salvation. Today is the day God's saying, come back. Come back. You're the prodigal son. Come back, son. Change your mind in the direction. And for you that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it just takes these words. I believe that Jesus Christ lived and died for my sins. To take away my sins. I have done wrong against you God and you Jesus. Please forgive me. And save me. And baptize me with your Holy Spirit. That's it. That's it. And maybe some of us. Some, some, someone out there. Just, I just, this is what I'm, I'm saying to say. You requested those words. I ask for forgiveness of my sins. You followed somebody in a word of prayer, but you're watching your life and it didn't take. Today's a day to re-say those words. Forgive me of my sins and baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Save me, Jesus. Save me. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus to praise you and thank you for this word. We thank you for not just, just, you proved it with the demonstration of Thomas. That even he who walked with Jesus, ate with him and slept with him, that he even doubted. That you didn't rebuke him, you didn't put, you know, smack him or you know, anything like that. You, you just loved him and just, you helped him through it. That today you will do the same with all. All who hear this word. Bless all that came today. And Father, for those that are asking for forgiveness, receive them into your hands and baptize them with the Holy Ghost. Forgive them of their sins. God, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you. Bless these people. Bless their hands and everything that they touch. Bless their homes and their relationships. Bless their, their finances. Bless them physically in health. For you are a mighty God. And you love them so. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you're dismissed, and we'll see you next week, Mother's Day.